All right, I think it's time to get started. Right. Uh, are, are we the last talk between now and lunch? Yeah, probably. Well, I mean, just maybe, no lunch. Maybe. We, we promise we won't go long then. We don't want to hold you for before the lunch. Well, we have cool demos, and we have um, uh, what I hope is going to be an interesting talk on running AI at the edge. So um, I'm Benjamin Cabe. I, I'm a program manager at Microsoft, and uh, I work on all things uh, developer evangelism uh, as part of the Azure IoT group, right? So um, all things IoT, IoT at the edge, IoT in the cloud, IoT on constrained devices, more beefier devices, um, that, that would be me. And Pamela, maybe you want to quickly yeah. introduce yourself as well. So my name is Pamela Cortez. Uh, my past life, I was a hardware engineer still doing uh, development on IoT devices, but uh, now I work at Microsoft, focusing on IoT, on how we can really uh, move forward on Intelligent Edge. So we're really excited to go through kind of the challenges and uh, things to think about when building these new type of solutions uh, that we've encountered, and hopefully that can help uh, all of you as well. Yeah. So, yeah, we're going to talk basically about the, some of the use cases of running AI at the edge, some of the best practices, some of the technology that's out there, some of the open source technology that you can use to basically run, uh, run AI at the edge and what it means to, uh, to do some processing at the edge and then find ways to still like, operate your solutions uh, in, in a scalable way, still find ways, uh, still find ways to, uh, to make sure that you move your, your data and all your insights from the edge to, to the cloud. Right, so the, the quickly going through through the agenda, but basically just yeah, talking about edge, edge, edge. What is edge computing, and, and in particular, what does it mean to run intelligence at the edge? Uh, like I said, talking about some of the technology that's out there. Uh, so we're going to um, 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 talk about the Azure IoT Edge framework, which, ha which happens to be um, an open source project and open, an open source ecosystem for running um, IoT and AI at the edge. Diving into some of the scenarios around computer vision, uh, image, uh, yeah, image recognition, um, uh, sound uh, analysis, predictive maintenance, that kind of stuff, and demos, like, like, I, like I said before. So just making sure that we're, we're talking about the, the, the same thing here, but just what, what is ed edge computing, right? And, and looking at those scenarios, doing predictive maintenance, you have an, an, an old rig with lots of data, uh, probably actually lots of uh, legacy devices, like 10 or 20 years old uh, devices producing lots, lots of data. Um, what if you could use this data to, um, to, to predict when um, like a, um, something somewhere is, is going to fail? Um, what about like, doing speech recognition? What about uh, smart retail and figuring out when uh, um, like you have uh, um, a shelf that's, that's about to like, I mean, there's a particular product, uh, a particular SKU, uh, for which you're really low in inventory and you need to order, order more. Uh, what about smart city and figuring out like traffic and all that kind of stuff? Well, those scenarios, there's, there's some, um, um, some things that, that I see that are pretty uh, common to those scenarios. There's lots of data involved, right? When it comes to like the oil rig and predictive maintenance, like I said, there's really tons of data uh, and it's probably going to be pretty complex to uh, predict whenever uh, something um, like a, a particular uh, part is going, to, is going to fail. So if you need to move all the data that you're collecting on your super remote uh, oil field all the way to the cloud to run your uh, machine learning algorithms to just like figure out that there is this particular um, um, and um, um, yeah, oil um, machine, whatever, it, that's going to fail, then it's not really going to work, right? What about security as well, right? What about um, like running, um, um, like, yeah, making sure that, that the data that you move uh, between your, your oil rig and, and the cloud, uh, you, you move only uh, the data that, that's basically safe to move, or if you do move uh, and, and have some data uh, floating between your edge devices and your field and the cloud, that making sure that it's secure, basically. So that's, that's when we start thinking about edge computing, making, starting thinking about running some of the stuff that typically these days you would be running in your cloud, start moving this closer to, to the edge, closer to where uh, that stuff actually happens, right? But then it's hard. Like it's hard in terms of making sure, and in, in no particular order, making sure that all that you're going to do at the edge, you're still going to have the same level of, of security and, and trust that you would expect from a private or public cloud, like in terms of I don't know, like on, on my oil, um, um, on my oil rig and my oil, um, or my in my plant, I might have different um, like kind of algorithms and different uh, software pieces of software that I want to run. 
maybe coming from different vendors. So how do I make sure that uh, all those vendors maybe run on the same piece of hardware and same piece of server, if you will, on, on my factory floor, but like do, do it in a secured way? What about connectivity? If I, if I am to, to run uh, software closer to the edge, think again remote uh, old rig, the connection is going to be, and the bandwidth is going to be uh, at a premium, right? It's going to be expensive. It's probably not going to be super reliable. Uh, I don't know, you, maybe you use satellite. So it's not like you're going to have the same level of, um, uh, and the, the same like uh, reliability that you would have within a cloud environment. Uh, the hardware, just like uh, when, when, you, uh, when you have a server farm um, at the edge, it's even more like the, the, the heter heterogeneity of the hardware is even more of a concern. You have, like I mentioned before, you have some devices that might be uh, legacy devices running some uh, uh, funky uh, operating systems. You may have different flavors of whatever is your uh, operating system of choice. So how do you orchestrate all that um, software that eventually you want to move to the edge? How do you um, have that uh, flow into your, um, uh, your build pipelines, right? And whatever uh, software you're going to uh, build and, and create for and, and for running at the edge, how do you like, actually push that uh, to, to the edge, right? So the, the idea at the end is, I mean, the typical IoT pattern is pretty simple, right? It's typically you have those things, those physical devices uh, that are able to connect to the internet, so fine, they can use some kind of, of cloud, cloud gateway, uh, and then all the data that you're moving to the cloud that's pretty easy. You can just like extract all the insights and all the, all the information that you need. Uh, but what happens when, um, like, for whatever reason, you're remote, like an old rig, or you have some security constraints? You don't really want to rely on the cloud, and you want to move all uh, or part um, um, of your intelligence to to the edge. Um, essentially, how would you do that? Um, Taking Azure IoT Edge as an example, but there's, um, that's really just one example. Think containers, basically, right? All, all the code uh, and all the, um, uh, the science, uh, if you will, that, 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 that will go into doing your predictive maintenance, doing your image recognition, et cetera, you will basically build um, these as containers, right? And so you can use um, proprietary services or like um, uh, commercial services like what Azure is providing in terms of Azure Cognitive Services for image recognition and so on. You can build your own um, like containers with custom code that's going to be processing basically data streams for doing predictive maintenance and so on. And you build, uh, you build those containers, you put them in your uh, um, uh, container registry uh, of choice, and then what's basically happening is that Everything that you would have typically done uh, by relying on those uh, like server-side services, you just move uh, to the edge, and you have the Azure IoT Edge runtime, uh, which is basically a, a Docker runtime, if you will, right? That, that's just going to take all those containers and making sure that they run uh, um, at the edge, making sure that if for some reason uh, they, they need to be restarted. It's basically going to orchestrate all that, take care of all, all the confidentiality that can go um, um, in, in making sure that all the containers are, are really isolated from one another. And then you can start thinking about uh, like offline scenarios and basically moving some of the processing at the edge and just pushing only the relevant bits uh, to, to, to your cloud for like effectively making the world aware of all the, all the data insights that you've extracted, extracted from, from the field. So Azure IoT Edge, and again, we're just going through this as basically an example of how to build uh, and how to run AI at the edge using Azure IoT Edge as an example. It's open source, uh, so in practice, it's uh, effectively what I just did. You can uh, like create workloads, in including like really um, pretty uh, complex like AI, machine learning kind of stuff. Uh, you create those workloads, and you have um, IoT Edge uh, that orchestrates them that runs them locally uh, on, on the gateway, takes care of uh, like monitoring the health, restarting the containers that for some reason might need to, keeps them up to date if that's what you want to do. Uh, like any time that you will have an update deployed to a container on your registry, it would do the update. And it's open source, right? Uh, Security-wise, it also takes care of the, the security, like I mentioned. Uh, you, 
only want your edge device, your edge gateway, especially if you're in an oil uh, rig or on like on, on the shop floor, you only want to run those modules, those containers uh, that are effectively trusted, right? So you, with IoT Edge, you can leverage um, hardware uh, root of trust. You can leverage uh, like uh, secured inter uh, communication between all your containers, so that effectively you have a solution for uh, like securely running your software and your, your IP, right, at, at, at the edge. Um, so yeah, I mean, IoT Edge is, uh, like in terms of hardware, it really depends, like the, the kind of hardware you're gonna use really depends on your workload. It can be as uh, small or as simple as a Raspberry Pi kind of, uh, kind of device, right? But it can be a more, uh, like a, a beefier kind of um, uh, edge server, uh, something even like maybe deployed in the, um, um, like in, in a server, like in a data center local to the, 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 uh, the factory floor, right? Or, uh, I mean, it can be anything really, all the way from uh, um, pretty pre-constrained devices to really super uh, powerful um, devices, including like GPU capable devices, like what Pamela is gonna, is gonna cover, running Linux, running Windows, it doesn't really matter. Uh, and any uh, OCI uh, compatible container that you may have, um, IoT Edge can run, right? So again, if you've already gone through uh, like the work of packaging some of your IP into uh, Docker containers, you can start thinking about pushing this software and this IP at, at the edge. Uh, so there's lots of devices that are available out there, all the way from Raspberry Pi to NVIDIA GPU um, devices to all kinds of servers that are already uh, IoT Edge capable, so you can check out um, the, the, the link. And um, yeah, I mean, feature-wise, you have uh, everything you need for like running whatever container uh, you'd like. Security-wise, in terms of provisioning uh, devices onto your solution, um, IoT Edge can leverage whatever hardware uh, modules or X509-based uh, PKI infrastructure you may have to make sure that only trusted uh, pieces of gateways can, can join your, um, uh, your IoT um, solution. You can, um, like there's lots of services from the, the basically the, the AI ecosystem at large and the, the container ecosystem at large that, that can already run on IoT Edge all the way from like machine learning to custom vision to all kinds of SQL or NoSQL databases that just run. Uh, and, uh, and of course you will need to have hardware that can support uh, whatever requirements um, Redis or uh, Mongo, whatever we will have, but you can leverage all, all this uh, community and ecosystem and uh, yeah, it's enterprise ready. You can use whatever language uh, you'd like, of course. Uh, that's what's nice with uh, container-based solution is, I mean, you just uh, yeah, use whatever is your language of choice. We have all, all the tooling, uh, and we're gonna be showing some, um, some of that as part of the demo. So what if, like what happens when, like beyond just edge use cases, what happens? What is AI at the edge, really? I think it's actually um, uh, interesting to look at the different uh, or some of the of the use cases and what uh, basically what's the, the, the what category they belong to in terms of what data you manipulate and what data you use to basically do your magic and your uh, artificial intelligence um, with all the telemetry that you collect from all the IoT sensors that you have in your oil rig on your factory floor uh, like basically one of the use like typical use case for uh, for AI at the edge would be predictive maintenance. I'm collecting the temperature and the torque and whatever on all my uh, equipment, and I can start uh, like figuring out when something is gonna is gonna fail. All things sound I can use for doing speech recognition or also for predictive maintenance. Like in, any idea what I what I what I'm thinking about when I say predictive maintenance with sound? Think um, elevators, right, or escalators. Um, I've heard actually a story, escalators in Germany in, in, in the winter time, because they put so much salt on the roads, et cetera, people just walk on the escalators and they bring lots of salt and lots of dirt, really. And so putting some microphones near to the escalators, you can listen to like how the escalator sounds and when it starts sounding like pretty bad, then you can maybe send a technician to just, to just clean it up. So that's, that's a, a use case and typically you don't want to send megabytes or gigabytes of sound streams to the, to the cloud to do your sign recognition. Vision, even more so, it's gonna be maybe even terabytes with, with, uh, with computer vision, right? So for smart retail, smart city, optimizing traffic. So that's, um, yeah, that's another use case as well, right? So predictive maintenance, how would you do predictive maintenance at the edge using um, something like Azure IoT Edge? Well, typically, you can use and, and, and run 
any stream analytics solution uh, that, that, that's available out there, out there. You can use uh, Apache Spark streaming, you can use Azure Stream Analytics. Essentially, what, what you have when, when you start uh, using something like Azure Stream Analytics or, or, or Spark Streaming is you can just start writing queries. Like you have your, at, at the edge, you will deploy some containers essentially that are extracting data from your sensors, extracting data and, and telemetry from all the, all, all the equipment that you have at the edge. And you can feed this data into your stream analytics um, um, algorithms basically to be like, hey, I see that there is a trend uh, and something's gonna fail, right? So you can leverage IoT Edge to orchestrate how the data is gonna flow from your data producers to your stream analytics uh, algorithms and like really literally in just a few lines of, uh, of code and, and, and queries, you can, you can start doing uh, predictive maintenance, really, right? And anom anomaly detection. Sound, uh, you can use, I mean, there's lots of solutions out there for doing uh, uh, and, and running sound-based um, sound, sound AI at the edge, but you, you can look uh, at the, the Cortana SDK, for example, or um, all the, um, like some, some examples that, that we've published, but essentially, same, same principle, right? You have some containers, and, and you really can like, have a modular solution there. You, some containers that are producing sound, that, and with set sound, you would uh, route into the containers that are in charge of like extracting, extracting information, doing speech to text, text to speech, uh, and then once you've extracted the data that's meaningful to you, maybe you actually decide that that data is gonna be sent to, um, to the cloud, right? Which um, actually brings us to like more that you can do with uh, the things like um, Azure um, Cognitive Services. You can actually start looking into video analysis, right, and custom vision. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, Pamela, you have lots of, um, lots to say about yeah. what, what, how to do um, the video analysis and custom vision at the edge. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to vision. So one of the kind of the top scenarios, uh, Benjamin covered two of them, but vision, um, adding uh, cameras as a sensor is actually a really, really hot topic and hot scenario, especially in retail, even manufacturing, uh, fleet management. There's so many solution scenarios that wants to have cameras um, at the edge and be able to do machine learning. Uh, at the edge, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is because imagine that you have uh, tons and tons of video that's being taken by this camera and your, your gateway device. Uh, do you wanna send all of that data to the cloud? Some solutions you might, maybe other solutions you don't because it's a lot of money to be sending all of that data, especially all the video if you're taking high res or anything like that to send all of it to the cloud. So a lot of people uh, kind of want to save money that way and only send the important bits uh, that they were able to, maybe they were doing anonymy detection um, as one of their solutions and they had an anonymy detection uh, AI model that lives on the edge, they're actually able to pick what data they want to send. Uh, and so that's really important for cost saving, but it's also important for latency. So a really great example that I, I really like is uh, Shell. They came up with a solution with Microsoft where uh, at a gas station, they were thinking about gas station safety, and they had all of these security cameras. And you can imagine at a gas pump, uh, hopefully no one in this room does it, uh, if you're smoking next to a gas pump, obviously that's a bad, bad thing. Or even if you're talking on your cell phone and you're pumping your gas, uh, there's a lot of things that can happen. And if you have to wait for that data to go to the cloud, do your machine learning on the cloud side, and then come back to tell, let's say the uh, worker who's in the gas station, hey, hurry up and stop that, you might actually run into issues because every split second counts. And so that's the other reason why people are seeing vision and doing intelligent edge solutions uh, becoming more and more popular. Uh, so Benjamin uh, gave kind of you know, from small devices to big devices. But when it comes to vision on the edge, uh, one thing I've noticed is there's still kind of confusion on which devices to use, uh, especially if you're doing a proof of concept. Doing a proof of concept to going into production is a whole new story. And it's, you know, if you're into hardware um, um, engineering or you're on deal with the hardware side, you have all of your basic things. You have to think about end of life or all of those things. But since this is still kind of a new space, 
space, you're seeing more and more devices pop up into the market. And then maybe you won't even see a device in the market yet that fits your needs because this is still a really new space. Uh, so we, we call out Intel, we call out NVIDIA where they are building these ecosystem of uh, products to make it easier to do some intelligent at the edge. But uh, where I'm seeing a lot more uh, hardware providers be able to bring that. A um, next question is, okay, great. Uh, I wanna do what say anonymity detection in my uh, factory floor. And I want to have high res uh, video that's going into my gateway device. I want to do intense uh, machine learning on the edge. And uh, can I do that on a Raspberry Pi? Uh, so that is something that I hear a lot because there's a still trying of understanding of uh, this world of AI when you're on the hardware side of understanding how big are these models. Uh, and that's something that uh, I think of it as this new way of teams coming together and working together. I'm interested in this room, who focuses on kind of the AI side? Do we have any kind of data folks over here? Okay, I see, I see a couple over there. Um, what, who focuses on the hardware side? Okay, a little bit more there. What I've been noticing um, in my, my previous job is when I was coding with partners and customers, those teams rarely talk to each other. So when you bring them together and say, hey, we're gonna build on this device, um, the, the uh, machine learning experts are super excited. They build this beautiful model that cannot fit on the device. Um, or the device folks might not have the same terminology or uh, be able to communicate effectively to those teams. So when, as you know, if you're at your company, start to think about how those teams can come together and work better together. I'm even seeing a huge increase in Python support uh, because there's a lot of uh, you know uh, AI models being built in Python and C, and because of that, there's a common language that both the hardware folks and the uh, machine learning experts can, can come together and kind of have a way where they can have the same language even. Uh, but there's different toolings, different mindsets of how to, to engage an issue or a challenge. Um, other thing when selecting a hardware is thinking about storage. Uh, storage is huge. If you are a company where you're on an oil rig, uh, we always use that one because there's, there's a, lot, <laughs> a lot of those partners and customers, but if you're on an oil rig and uh, you deploy this edge device, has this beautiful machine learning model on it. It's, uh, um, uh, you have that deployed, but you have only one connection through satellite once every two weeks. Where's that do uh, data gonna be stored? So thinking about that, and uh, that's one reason why I put the data box edge. Um, there's plenty of other devices out there where it has a lot of storage uh, and also a lot of processing power to do these ML uh, models or machine learning on the edge. Uh, so I kind of talked about bringing the two teams together, but on the AI side, uh, there's a lot of companies right now, a lot of startups and even the big tech companies that are noticing that, you know, we have a shortage. We have a shortage of hardware engineers where we have a shortage of these AI experts as well. So what about these teams who, maybe not have a large uh, team to be able to develop these solutions. So now you see these tech companies being able to provide services like COG services where it actually has the AI model and you can take it, deploy it on the edge and you don't have to worry about the upkeep of that model because uh, you have, let's say the Microsoft research team or you have folks who've been working on AI for a long time do that for you. And there's also the option of creating your custom model, taking models that maybe you find uh, through the different communities and making it and applying it to your, to your solution instead of reinventing the wheel. And that's really popular. And I think that's gonna be more and more as this community builds, it's gonna continue to be a lot of support there or just build your own. Um, and that's always great, but it's things of, you know, that life cycle of that model and upkeeping it as well that you need to think about. So uh, Benjamin mentioned about containers. And what's, what's awesome about putting uh, your AI model in a container and then deploying it on the edge is the fact that 
let's say I have a container that has um, anatomy detection on it. I just deployed it on one of these one of these devices. This is actually a Jetson Nano. I'm not being sponsored by NVIDIA. I wish I was, because I would love to get all of their products. Um, but this is a small, small device. It's only like, I think $99, don't quote me on the price. It's really cheap, um, and then there's this big, big, hardware device, this is a PX2, it's meant for autonomous vehicles. A container that can run on this device can run on the same device. And that's really important when you have multiple gateway devices. Also, if you wanna use that same AI model, let's say you, um, your company does something as a retail solution, but it's an anatomy detection and it also can de uh, deploy in a other solution in a different scenario, you could still use that container um, that has that type of uh, information that be useful in the other solution. So it's a way for you to not have to rewrite code a bunch of different times. Uh, so I think that's really important. This slide is showing there's really you know, two architects, uh, architectures you can think about. One, separate containers. If you just want to run all of your solution into one container, what are sort of the benefits of that versus kind of separating out the containers? Um, it really depends on your solution. Some people like separating out the containers because they can reuse bits and pieces of it and multiple solutions. So it's fully up to your different solution. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start on the, on the demo. So this is image recognition using IoT Edge, which is an open source project um, with NVIDIA Jetson. So what I'm gonna do, first find the mouse. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah, I'm gonna let you. Oh, wow. Perfect, all right, I got the camera here. You can see there's uh, tons and tons where it's picking up as person, 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 chair, 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 chair. Um, and it's able to look at the AI model, which is the YOLO uh, AI module that uh, we have containerized that's running on this device. Yeah, so I'm going to maybe just set this cup here, and it can identify that it's a cup. And so what you're actually able to do is do all of that machine learning on edge. So it's just running on this device, on this uh, particular uh, device. You can actually visualize that data and send it to, to the cloud, the important data that you want. Uh, so that important data was to say, hey, I actually was able to see a bunch of people I was able to see a cup and identify how many times you saw that and where uh, in a point of time. So you can send the important data up, uh, and I think that's, that's, that's really, really powerful. Uh, one, one thing that um, will also, a challenge that people are gonna face when it comes to uh, intelligent edge, especially with privacy, I'm a big privacy nerd, so I'm gonna just insert this in really quick, is that, um, I just took a bunch of like the camera, looked at said person, 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 but I didn't spend time identifying who you are. And so for example, if you're in Europe and let's say you are doing an example where you're doing video training and you're walking in the public streets and you're capturing people's, people's faces, if that data lives on the device and you're thinking about GDPR, those are things you need to think about. And um, how do you protect that data or how do you before the data is even stored on that device, blur out the faces or how you store that data. That is something I think is gonna really be a big challenge that a lot of companies are gonna face when they start uh, thinking about privacy and, and ethics when it comes to the AI models. So that was a demo there. Uh, that same container could be deployed on this device over here. And I'm gonna go back to my presentation again. So this is, so this looks great. You saw a cup, but what, what is the actual real world scenario for that? Because, uh, I mean, I think we've all seen plenty of models uh, that show it's a banana or a cup or anything like that. Uh, but a, a great scenario would be actually a, a, a shipment company where they are looking at their different packages and you can see that you have the same container run on all of these cameras, um, and uh, you, it, which is really nice because you didn't have to flash 
the camera with all different code or anything like that. You can actually, since you have the container in the cloud, Benjamin mentioned the container registry. If you have that container in the cloud, you can deploy it to mobile de uh, devices without having to sit there and have every device individual. And that's super powerful. So you can see with this video that there's actually one of the belts, belt three, that uh, the package is not actually correct. So it's actually telling you this is the wrong package. And all of these cameras are running the same container. Uh, so then that goes back to cloud. Then you can actually put that into your business integration and let someone know on the factory floor, uh, you know, that is the wrong package. And that $100 uh, device that Pamela was talking about, it can actually process like multiple video streams, like 1080p video streams at the yeah. same time, like one IoT Edge instance, one set of containers, several uh, video streams, all that processing can be done like basically with just a couple hundred bucks uh, at the edge. That's pretty Thanks. cool. And uh, one of the things you'll start seeing in that hardware ecosystem is those power powerful devices, but you're also gonna get to see really tiny, tiny devices, like tiny ML. I know we're do working on stuff with Microsoft Research around that. You're also seeing uh, even TensorFlow being ran on smaller microcontrollers. And so that is gonna be even more powerful where intelligence is gonna be any part of those devices. Uh, so I kind of mentioned this before about your storage on the edge, thinking about that. Like for example, if you work with Azure before, you might have heard of blob storage, but it's a type of storage. You can actually run that, same thing that you're doing on the cloud, you can run it on the edge. So being conscious of time, I want to leave some time for Q&A. Uh, some of the resources for you is if you want to actually run this demo, here's the hands-on lab that you can run if you get a, a nano device. We also have a workshop that's running uh, uh, two more times uh, today that you don't have to register. So if you didn't register on the site, don't worry about it. It's the AI uh, dev kit will be over there so you can learn how to make a model, deploy it on the edge, and it's uh, workplace safety. And it's, it's really fun to actually play with those cameras. Um, and then we have plenty, plenty of other resources too. I'll do a, do a really quick plug. Sorry, Benjamin. Um, I'm part of the IoT show, so I do a lot of videos. So if you're curious about IoT, definitely check out the IoT show. There's uh, Olivier and myself. We try to educate people about IoT all the way from the hardware side, how to do provisioning of your devices, all the way to what is kind of the new tech that's coming out as well. All right. Is there any, any questions that, that folks have that uh, did you? No, I got way too excited because you, <laughs> you moved your arms. All right, well, if you have any questions, feel free. We'll be here uh, um, next door and then at the booth to answer any questions. So it was a really exciting space and being able to work across teams in a company, it's, it's just really exciting to have different types of minds come together to build these solutions. So thank you so much for attending. Thank you.